My name is Ani Williams, and I'm a musician, author, and sound therapist. Well, for about 40 years, I've been a recording artist, composer, singer, harpist, and then for about 30 years, sound therapist, and then training people how to use the system. My sound journey began when I was a child, actually, was always singing and dancing. But the training in the science of sound really began when I started traveling and noticing the indigenous traditions and how they use sound and dance and rhythm to create a unified field. And when I was growing up, I really didn't have a religious tradition because our family didn't really we didn't go to church, so I was very free to experience directly nature and the power of the natural rhythms. I think the big problem today that faces humanity is the fragmentation. We used to have a unified tradition of spirituality, medicine, arts, culture, it was all unified, and through that fragmentation, we've become lost. So I think we've lost our connection to the natural world, the natural rhythms of life. Voice analysis is also called voice diagnostics, and it's being used in modern medicine. By analyzing the voice patterns, we discover the frequencies that are telling the story of the state of the person, state of the mind, body, and spirit. We measure voice patterns by using a machine, and there are many different modalities out. Corporations are using it uh, with computer systems to analyze the patterns of a prospective employee, or doctors are using it to discover the patterns that tell the state of the, the physical or the emotional. So our voice reflects our state of being. It communicates to the world how we are, how we're feeling, our state of health even. And so modern diagnostics of voice analysis are using that to see what needs to be balanced in the person. So if we discover a missing frequency, for instance, in a voice, there are many different applications available. Some of these applications are synthetically created frequencies. The way I work is with natural harmonic frequencies that are created with the human voice and with instruments that are thousands of years of practice of using this technique of harmonics. Yes, the voice indicates specific uh, states of being in the organs of a person. It can even indicate what minerals they're missing. And each frequency uh, relates to specific parts of the body and even emotions. I learned voice diagnostics, voice analysis, uh, from a woman named Sherry Edwards. And she was a pioneer in this science. And she was doing it before any of the big corporations caught on to the power that, or the, before the big corporations caught on to what we can learn about a person by just diagnosing the voice patterns. And when I learned this system from her, she was using um, a computer program. And I realized after doing this tradition, this system, that it needed to become more organic because the emotions in a person are the key to finding the frequency that sets them free. Every traumatic experience, every, say, an accident or any kind of a major emotional 
uh, occurrence has a frequency. If we can identify that frequency, we know what to use to set it free. It's like a form of sonic homeopathy. The sound application is really important because a lot of the applications that are being used are uh, synthetically created computer generated tones. For instance, a sine wave in a particular frequency. But what I found is working better and more effectively is using natural harmonic instruments and the human voice, which is as ancient as humanity. One of the most powerful instruments that we have is the human voice. It is the only living instrument that exists. Astrology is a very important part of this work. And actually in medicine, it was used up until the 1700s. Astrology and astronomy were taught in the medical academies in Europe. In fact, Galileo was one of the instructors. And this was important because at the moment of birth, there is a configuration in the heavens, and science now is acknowledging that these influences of the sun, the moon, the planets have frequencies. Everything is singing. So this was a very important part of medicine, and this is part of the fragmentation that has happened over the years that we have lost these integrative tra traditions that need to be brought back together again. After decades of using this technique with thousands of people around the world, it's been incredible to see the transformation in children the, with autism, to see them begin to communicate again and come out of isolation. And I think that is at the root of what modern medicine needs to return to the reintegration of all of these techniques. And autism is just that, it's an example of that separation. Um, other, other examples, there are many, 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 but basically when a person receives the tones that are missing in their energy field, in the brain activity, in their whole being, when, when we bring back those missing frequencies, transformations occur, well-being, uh, manifesting, a person will manifest their true desire, their true purpose for being. A beautiful example is working with one of my first uh, autistic clients. He was five years old, and he was incredibly hyperactive, speaking gibberish, and the parents were really stressed out, so everyone was stressed out. But I was able to get a voice analysis. And then I sat down, I play the harp, so I sat down at the harp, and I just started playing, matching his activity with the music, and then slowed it down. He came over to the harp and began to play a duet with me. He'd never seen a harp. He came up to me, kissed me on the cheek afterwards, and said, harp. So his parents got him an instrument. He began communicating intelligently, thriving and flowering. Using the voice is one of the most direct things that we can do to heal ourselves. And simply the act of sighing naturally connecting the voice with the emotion. This is something that we have lost because we're told, don't do this, don't cry now, don't laugh now, don't be too noisy. And that connection between sound, the voice, and emotion is one of the keys to healing. So if a person would simply just sigh into the way they're feeling, this alone is healing if we become more natural and reconnect the neural pathways between the brain, the emotion, the feeling, and the voice.
That is a huge key. There's actually a term for it. It's called sentix, the sound of emotion. That term is from Manfred Kleins, a biophysicist. So for instance, if I'm working with a client, I ask them questions about their life, just baseline things to get an overall pattern. But then I go into certain um, emotional areas. What is your wish? What would you do if you could do anything at all? Where would you live if you could live anywhere? And getting the person to talk about their true feelings always brings out the missing tone. It's extraordinary. So our wishes, our dreams, what we could do if we really had the opportunity, that frequency is the key. So the application, um, once we identify the missing frequencies, there are many out there on the market. You know, there are many synthesized frequencies, sine waves created by a computer, but I use a natural harmonic sound, the sound of overtone chanting, the Australian didgeridoo, which has been used in sound therapy for perhaps 40,000 years. The harp, which has been used in therapeutic settings for thousands of years, going back to Pythagoras and the Asclepian temples. And we use these natural instruments as the application, keyed in the tone that the people need. Cymatics is a very interesting um, science, really. Uh, Dr. Emoto really brought it to the public eye and his uh, photographing water crystals and the different effects that different emotional states, different language, uh, and the state of love the effect on the water. So cymatics is basically the pattern that is created in matter by sound frequencies. And medical science is using this same tradition to regenerate heart tissue. For instance, at Stanford University, they're regenerating heart tissue by using specific acoustics there's no end to what we can do to recreate our reality with the right frequencies and with the natural harmonic frequencies. And that's a key in the application. So Gaia Sound is the uh, name I gave the sound business that I've been doing for 35 years. Son Gaia Sound of the Earth or Song of the Earth. And basically just a return to the natural frequencies that really heal the sounds of nature, the sounds of natural harmonic range of instruments, and especially the human voice. We're in a very, very interesting time now um, with the opening of the knowledge of what sound can do. And we're finding all sorts of remedies and claims out on the market. You know, if you use 528 or, you know, 432 or whatever, it's going to, or the Schumann resonance, for instance, it's going to heal everything. And the problem with that is that not one size fits all. Not one frequency is going to heal everyone in the same way. It's like trying to give every person the same medicine prescription. It wouldn't work. So we have to study the person, their unique frequencies. Everyone has a symphony of sound and identify those sounds and then give them the correct combination for their liberation. So I believe that with healing each person, liberating their own voices, we will have that perfect choir on the earth. One voice at a time, one complete symphony at a time, and we have the choir. We have the choir of the earth singing in harmony again. If we just used our voices to express our joy, to sing without it being a performance, just to naturally express 
the world would be very, very different. Before I leave you today, I need to ask you the most important question. What is love? What is love? I think it's going beyond this illusion of separation, the illusion of me being separate from you or ourselves being separate from nature. I think if we went beyond that separation, it would change everything. Beautiful. Hmm. Love you, darling. Love you. Thank you.